We'd like to welcome you back to our current event and weekly Bible study for July 17th, 2011. This is part two of our teaching regarding the UFO alien agenda kicking into high gear, um, that whole end time deception. And we're, we're just going to go ahead and continue with our study. I'm going to read from our PDF here. Some people get so involved in the ET phenomenon that they can actually start channeling supposed space brothers. Sometimes they claim that the aliens actually communicate through them. But how can a physical being be channeled? Some alien beings claim to have evolved beyond matter to a spiritual existence. It seeks to provide an atheistic evolutionary mechanism to justify that aliens are, in fact, really spiritual beings who can replace the ultimate spiritual being of man's construction, God. So, in other words, they're trying to usurp God's position. True believers point to crop circles as a major physical evidence of alien visitations. They claim that the the designs are too complex to be man-made. Groups like circle makers amply disprove that crop crop circles, the claim that crop circles have to be created by beings with advanced technology. In fact, traditional crop circles are easily made with planks and ropes. But I will will interject something in here. I don't think all crop circles are man-made. I mean, it's just a satanic parlor trick. You know, if they, they got this advanced technology, you know, they're, they're you know, fallen angels, <laughs> you know, they've got advanced technology, they've been around moons of more years than, you know, or I shouldn't say millions, but I mean, they've been around a lot longer than we've been around, okay, so for them to do something like a crop circle is just, again, really a satanic parlor trick. I do think, and it's self-admitted, that a lot of these are man-made, though. And this, there's a whole group that exists, these circle makers, that go around and do this stuff. Okay, so going further here. But this does not mean that even indisputably man-made circles aren't relevant to the UFO phenomenon. People involved in the construction of crop circles often report strange phenomena surrounding these sites, even when they're making them manually. Quote, our crop formations are intended to function as temporary sacred sites in this landscape. In other words, a place where you could go to do an occult working. Maybe some type of witchcraft ritual, maybe a channeling session, something of this nature. That's why they're actually made. While constructing uh, crop formations in the fields, we have experienced a series of of aerial anomalies, including small balls of light, which would most likely be orbs, columns of light, and blinding flashes, all apparently targeting us in our crop formations. We are unsurprised at the numerous visitors who have reported a diverse assortment of anomalies associated with our artworks. These have included physiological effects such as headache and nausea, uh, healing effects, uh, such as one reported for a cure for acute osteoporosis. Wow. Number one, how do you get acute osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is a is bone loss, essentially. Okay, um, Usually of, of around 60% of the actual um, bone integrity of a person, particularly happens with women more often than men, due to various hormonal factors, and a lot of other factors that can interplay with that. But, um, how do you get acute osteoporosis? It, it like, takes years, it takes decades, and decades to develop osteoporosis. It's a long, slow thing, and that's why it's so hard to reverse, because, number one, you're dealing with bone, which has a very poor blood supply, and, um, you're dealing with something that took decades to happen, so it's very hard to reverse it quickly. They're saying they had actually gotten healed from osteoporosis. Well, the only way you could really verify that is through a bone density test. So, anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. Anyway, physical effects such as camera and other electronic equip- equipment failure uh, happen in the crop circles. We are certain that our artworks are subject of paranormal forces and act to catalyze other paranormal events. It almost sounds like, you know, when these, these people play with Ouija boards. And that video series I had told you about the other day that I had watched... Um, that I said you need to, the one of the ones I said, you know, you really need to pray about before you even think about watching. Um, one of those videos showed people using the Ouija board. They were home videos. And I mean, 
you know, that that Oracle thing that that you put your hands on, I mean, that thing was moving by itself big time, and it was in different scenarios over and over and over again. Again, it's a demonic parlor trick. It's just a demon moving that thing. And when you, when you, um, it appears as though when they make these crop circles, a lot of paranormal things start to happen. It's a lot like messing around with the Ouija board. You're going to attract evil. You're going to attract these demonic energies into the area, essentially. So, going further, uh, let's see here. Okay, demonologists expect that when people dabble with the occult, even as a joke or a prank, evil spirits will usually jump at the opportunity to deceive and gain control over the people, like those that have become possessed after messing around with Ouija boards. Okay, just reiterating what I just said. But, circle makers, meaning these guys, this group called circle makers, may not be entirely innocent in this regard. As our book, Alien Intrusion, UFOs and Evolution Connection documents, quote, a little known fact about circle makers is that before they entered the lucrative commercial market, they called themselves Team Satan. That's pretty direct. (laughs) There's nothing, you know, there's really nothing left in the imagination there. Team Satan. Uh, That's what they called themselves, you know. This was a very bold name and might be subject suggestive, might be suggestive of their intent, and I'd say it's loud and clear. Indeed, satanic worship continues to be quite prolific in the world today, and many are drawn to its allure and mysticism. Have crop circles become the modern shrines of occult worship? Most certainly, Team Satan is not ashamed to publicly draw attention to the supernatural side of its work, and perhaps deliberately draw more folk into the dark world of the occult, using this curiosity factor. The Bible doesn't specifically mention aliens or UFOs, and we shouldn't expect it to. The Bible was written for all believers in all cultures, but it was written to specific people in specific cultures as well. So we should expect the text to conform with those cultures. Uh, Somewhat, though God's word in every case also transcends that culture. Talk about little green men would be incomprehensible and nonsensical to the first century Jew. It would be completely outside of his worldview. But although the Bible does not speak speak specifically about aliens, it is not silent about this issue either. First, the Bible is clear that God created. In fact, one of his core attributes is that he is the creator. So there is a vital difference between him and the lifeless idols created by human hands. You know, just there's, that's all through the Bible, Isaiah 40 through 44. Um, talks a lot about that. The goal of God's creation was to produce mankind in his image, to have eternal fellowship with him, and to produce a bride for Christ. This goal was so important that even mankind's sin did not cause him, meaning God, to abandon us. Instead, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, sacrificed himself for us so that we could have the potential to be brought back into right relationship with him. Second, the Bible states that there are spiritual beings called angels, one-third of which rebelled against God. The leader of this rebellion is called Lucifer, literally meaning light-bearer. Remember, if Satan can be transformed into an angel of light, it's no marvel that his ministers can be transformed into ministers of righteousness. They appear as righteous, okay, but they're not. They're of Satan. Um, But Satan, originally called Lucifer... And then he fell, his name was changed to Satan, literally meaning adversary. His primary trait is that he is a deceiver. And we can see that in his first recorded act in scripture, that he deceived Eve so that she sinned and persuaded Adam to rebel as well. His mission is to spite God, his creator, by taking down as many human beings as he can. Satan hates humans because we are made in the image of the creator who he hates. These angels can appear in a variety of forms. The ones who are obedient to God always appear as males, at least that's the way they're portrayed in Scripture. But not always like human males. And he says, see the angelic descriptions in Ezekiel and Revelation. Well, you have have angelic beings, too. You have seraphim, you have cherubim, who actually, that's what Satan was. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. Most likely he covered the throne of God. That was... He was the highest 
most likely created angelic like being. Okay, and then probably had a lot to do with why pride welled up. Because of his beauty, it says, and because of his merchandise, he was lifted up, his heart was lifted up. And then he said, I will be like God. I will ascend unto the sides of the north. Okay, so, anyway, I've done a teaching also on female angels with wings that you can key in the search box. Just say angels or female angels. Um, Contendingfortruth.com that goes into that. Because female angels are, are mentioned one time in the Bible. I think it's Zechariah. And um, it's not good. <laughs> so these people with all these little statues of female angels with wings in particular, or halos, which are nothing more than what they call an Egyptian sun disc, which is evil. But see, a lot of times all the, we're so used to thinking it is holy because this is how the Catholic art, like via Michelangelo, they portray Jesus, this you know, long hair Jesus that... Um, Again, I've, got, I've done whole studies on that, the whole concept of the Ascended Master, Sananda Emmanuel, Master Jesus, this false Jesus that the Catholic Church has given us. That's not what Jesus looks like. And they portray him with this Egyptian sun disc, and, you know, this and that. We've got to be really, really careful about that. And, and um, you can key in the word Master Jesus in the search box at contendingfortruth.com and um, listen to the subject on that, because that's going to be another thing that deceives millions. Just because this ascended master Jesus comes to the forefront and everybody's going to say, hey, that's the same looking guy in the picture that I got on my wall. I'm going to buy this hook, line, and sinker just because he looks like him. (laughs) If that's all it takes for Satan to deceive you and for you to abandon the word of God, because guaranteed that Jesus is not going to teach the word of God. He's going to tell you, no, you, you misinterpreted it. Man messed it up. There's going to be so many different ways that you can be deceived that Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, 24, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So you need to be on guard. Deception is the earmark of the day and time we're living in and moving into, and it's only going to get worse. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I'm here to also try to equip you so that you're not deceived. And that you can then be a beacon of light and hope to those around you that are in total and utter fear, confusion, and deception when these things go down because they've never been educated about these things at all. They're being destroyed for lack of knowledge, as the Bible says in Hosea 4.6. So you can reach out to them. Probably at that point, I won't be around anymore. I mean, not, at least not on the internet. Because I believe when it gets that bad, they're gonna they're probably going to have shut down the internet a long time ago and it's going to be Big Brother internet type of thing. Now, you know, I'm not saying God can't uh, provide another way, but I'm saying most likely that's probably going to be the scenario. So, let's say a lot of these things start to happen and there's a lot of teachings I would have liked to have done when all those start to happen. Well, I might, not, I might not be up on the internet to do them. I might not have that opportunity anymore. So that's why I'm trying to kind of get everybody up to speed now. Not to say I've got all the answers, you know, but I do believe that in totality, we're giving you good, solid information that you're going to be able to use in the future to fight the deception that's coming. And that's what we're trying to do here. So... <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's go further. These angels can appear in a variety of forms. The the ones who are obedient to God always appear as males, but not always like human males. See angelic descriptions in Ezekiel and Revelation, for example. And again, I went over the cherubim and seraphim. They don't they're different they're a higher order of angelic beings, I believe. Okay. Many believe that at one point in in time, fallen angels co-inhab- cohabited with women, producing the Nephilim, or the fallen ones. And these were the giants. This is how the word giants is translated in Genesis 6, as in the Hebrew, Nephilim, or, which means the fallen ones. Okay, They were hybrids. They were half-human, half-fallen angel. These angels are confined, and again, I've done many, many studies on that, and I've, I give you all the links to those in this teaching. 
These angels are confined in a special compartment of hell called Tartarus in the Greek. Awaiting judgment according to 2 Peter 2, 4 through 5, which reads, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness. Now that word hell is derived from the word Tartarus. The word hell here, uh, derived from the word Tartarus, is the, and it, is, it is the only time this word is used in the whole Bible. In other words, it's translated hell, but the underlying Greek is actually Tartarus, which is a different word than a lot of the other times they'll use hell. In other words, it's, a, it's part of hell, but it's a special compartment of hell, specifically for the fallen angels, particularly of Genesis 6. I believe there's other angels that fell after that, though. Because the Bible says in Genesis 6 that... It, it indicates there that um, also, it says also after that, that they, were, that they um, um, well actually, let me just go ahead and read that to you. Okay, just that one verse. There were giants, now this is after, this is after the sons of God saw their daughters, and then they fared, they took them wise all that they chose. And there were giants in the earth in those days. This is Genesis 6, 4. And also after that, in those days, in Noah's days, then came the flood, then came the ark, Then came Noah and his three sons and wives and uh, repopulating the earth. Eight people were saved. Okay, so it says also after that. Where do we see that in the Bible? Well, when they went into the promised land, there were giants in the promised land too. So if those angels were chained who left their first estate from Genesis 6, how do we explain the giants when we get into the promised land and very, various other places afterward. And the Bible says, and after that. Well, I believe most likely that more angels did fall. Or maybe some of the angels that fell in Genesis 6 didn't actually procreate with women. Maybe some of them didn't do that, I, I, but I don't see any Bible for that. And maybe some of them were waiting... On the other side of the flood, it's, it's kind of hard to be totally dogmatic about that particular subject. But it's just something I wanted to touch on. Okay, so, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and again, this is a special compartment of hell called Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So again, we're, we're talking specifically about that Genesis 6 in the flood that came after that particular time. Let's go further. The Bible indicates that the last days will be characterized by an intensifying of supernatural signs and wonders designed to, designed to deceive the world. See Matthew 12, uh, Matthew 24, plus Mark 13. And again, there's a lot of places you could go to to look at that. Uh, lest anyone think we're advocating one eschatological eschatological view or another, the Bible seems to refer to the time where the church exists on earth as the last days, which has lasted for nearly 2,000 years and counting. So we're using the last days in a biblical sense, not in the sense of any particular eschatological view. Revelation is even clearer, saying that the false prophet and the Antichrist, but if you look at the end times when it's talked about, Particularly the technology for even looking at the mark of the beast, it didn't exist prior to probably 30 years ago, maybe. 40 years ago, I don't know. All of the things necessary in order for things like the mark of the beast and those types of things to take place from a technological standpoint really didn't exist up until very recently. Okay, so that that's, I think, one of the ways we can... Uh, separate that out a little bit more. Okay, so let's go further here. Uh, Revelation is even clearer, saying that the false prophet and the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians uh, 2.9 will perform lying signs and wonders to draw people to the beast, also known as the Antichrist. Now, I, I put in there, it, say, it just says the false prophet. That's what the way they had it in this article. But, in 2 Thessalonians 2.9, it says the Antichrist will come of all lying signs and wonders as well. It's not just going to be the false prophet 
doing miracles and lying signs and wonders, the Antichrist is going to be able to do that as well. So that's why I put that verse in there. Yes, the false prophet, no doubt. But it's just not going to be the false prophet. Uh, and the lying signs and wonders are going to be used to draw people to the beast also known as the Antichrist of Revelation 19. Now, Jesus Christ said that a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. In other words, they want to base their religious paradigm on a sign or a wonder. I, the first thing I think of is the Catholics. You know, oh, I'm going to go to my Marian shrine. Maybe I'll get a vision. You know, the Lady of Medjugorje, the Lord's all these places they pilgrimage to, and then they walk on their knees until they're bleeding, and all this other works-based garbage, lying signs and wonders, and Satan will meet you at your need. If you're seeking a sign and a wonder based on some false religious premise, he will meet you at your need. He will give that to you all day long. If that's all it takes to get you into hell... Not to say there's not a lot of other factors that go along with that. So, that cannot be the basis of of what we believe of, of, of regarding salvation, regarding the word of God. Because Jesus Christ said a wicked and adul adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Why? Because this plays into the heart. And the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? According to Jeremiah 17, 9. Well, see, you see, a, you see a lying sign or wonder, your heart is moved. Your emotions are moved. Okay? It, it, it could be totally contradictory to the word of God. This is why you have to have, again, your house built on the solid rock of Christ Jesus and the word of God. Because if what you're seeing or what you're hearing or what you're experiencing contradicts the word of God, then flee from it or rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. But millions are going to fall for just the line signs and wonders alone. Let's go further. The devil is a counterfeiter, so we should not be surprised that just as Jesus' signs and wonders were designed to point people to him and the truth of his teaching. Now, you could say, well, why did Jesus do all the miracles and the signs and the wonders? Well, because the Jews were used to a sign. He had dealt with them through signs and wonders for a long time. I mean, their experiences in, you know, prior to going into the promised land, going into the promised land. The Bible says the Jews seeketh a sign, and the Greeks seeketh knowledge. So God had dealt with the Jewish race through signs and wonders, but they did not contradict the word of God. They did not point to some false god. They pointed back to him. They gave, these signs and wonders gave the Lord Jesus Christ the glory, the Father God the glory. That's the difference here. Okay, I'm not saying God can't perform miracles and signs and wonders. Okay, he, he, he created the universe. He can, he can do things that Satan could never hope to do. And I'm not saying he's not going to do that. We just have to be very cl clear that we're viewing these signs and wonders through the lenses of the Bible. And it needs to line up with the Word of God. Not contradict it. So I, let me just make that clarification there. Because I think that he is going to do some amazingly unbelievable things through his remnant, by the power of the Holy Spirit, His angelic host, I mean, I, I think those days are, are coming. I really do. Not to say in certain parts of the world or in certain instances He's not doing that now. I just mean uh, in the days and times to come. So let's go further here. Uh, let's see here. So again, the, these signs and wonders that Jesus did were designed to point people to him and the truth of his teaching. The false signs and wonders also served to deceive people into believing lies. When Paul refers to this in 1 Timothy 4, the context makes it clear that he is talking about heresies that will proliferate in the latter times, which seem to be a form of Gnosticism. But these doctrines of devils also seem to apply especially well to the teachings taught by the alleged aliens. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared 
with a hot iron. So, again, that's the latter times we're in reference to here. And that spirit is capital S. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly. The in the latter times. Okay, so, we're again, this is an indicator of the deception that we're, we're moving into. This seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So, let's go further here. It is a mistake for Christians to be uninformed or to ignore the alien phenomenon. Belief in aliens is so prevalent that the church will be seen as irrelevant in this area if Christians can't address the reality for the culture on this topic. And again, just look at how Hollywood portrays their version of Christianity, which is typically the Catholic religion, in the recent V series um, on ABC. We've got these motherships over all these major cities. They've got all this advanced technology. They've got their vaccinations. They can solve all of our problems, cure cancer. You know, they've got every carrot you can imagine. But the, their version of Christianity, which is false, the Catholic Church, is seen as like inept, irrelevant, powerless. That is how... Hollywood wants to portray any form of Christianity. What they would want to do, and what they have always attempted to do, is, and not just Hollywood, but the New Age movement and a lot of other different false religions and the media, is to lump true, born-again, Bible-believing Christianity and the remnant, those that are saved through the Lord Jesus Christ, into the same boat as Catholics and every other lukewarm false version of Christianity that may exist today. They love to lump us in with that. It's, it's, it's convenient. And that way they can just discredit the whole movement and put it all under one umbrella and just dismiss it all. It's... Its scientific bent has an allure not readily found in other false religions. We regularly dialogue with people who morph Jesus into an advanced extraterrestrial whose advanced technological prowess gave him the ability to perform the miracles and even raise the dead. That's another lie out there that's perpetuated in the New Age movement. Such ideas are challenging traditional Christian beliefs. In most, in most churches he visits, one of the authors uh, that they talk to regularly meets individuals who have seen something in the sky that they can't explain or even had an encounter with a being that claimed to be from another planet. Often, they have never spoken to their pastors or others in the church about it for fear of ridicule. As such things escalate due to the ongoing conditioning of the culture, we should heed the warnings of Jesus in Matthew twenty four twenty four, where it says, Jesus said, and this is regarding the end times, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. So in other words, false Christ, people that actually claim to be, maybe claim to be Jesus Christ, or some Christ-like figure, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. So it's not just going to be the Antichrist and the false prophet. There's going to be, like I said, so many flavors of deception out there. And people and in, in, in wicked people that can perform signs and wonders. And then it goes on to say, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So this is why I think it's important to try to maintain humility before the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you think, if you ever get to the point where you think, I can't be deceived... Take heed, lest ye fall. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. We ought to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought. That's why it's very important to maintain humility and fear of God before the Lord, because I think this will keep you focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, and the Word of God. You start thinking, well, I can't be fooled. Nobody, nobody can tell me nothing. Well, you're already deceived. Mark 13.22 says, For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect, which is a confirmation of Matthew 24.24. 24. First Chronicles 12.32 
And you probably won't hear this verse quoted many times. First Chronicles 12.32 And of the children of Ishakar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. So, in other words, these were men that had understanding of the times. To know what Israel ought to do. That's why it's important to have understanding of the times we're living in. Particularly if it's the time that the Bible and Jesus Christ clearly predicted will be the greatest deception, the times of the greatest deception that the world has ever known. We want to be understanders of the times. Acts 20.31 says, Watch, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Three years. Okay? Warning everyone night and day with tears. What is he warning them about? He's warning them about, most likely, deception. Wolves in sheep's clothing. These types of things. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. So it's saying watch. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. That let, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Most people are asleep about this issue. In the lukewarm circles. Totally asleep. Pastors are asleep, slumbering, but we're not supposed to be asleep. As do others, let us watch and be sober. That's what it says to do. Because a lot of people say, oh, I don't need to concern myself with any of this stuff. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. Well, <laughs> I, again, I would just point them to these verses and many others. 2 Timothy 4, 5, But watch thou in all things... Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. It's pretty important to watch. Luke 21 8, And Jesus said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. 2 Corinthians 4, four In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's a big reason, a big explanation as to why you'll try to deal with people and you just can't get through. I mean, it's like, forget it. Well, the God of this world hath blinded their minds uh, and they can't see. And then it goes on to say, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Going further, this is just a kind of an ending comment by, uh, in this particular article that I'm reading from, from Gwen from Australia. She said, as a mother, it is concerning how many shows are aimed at children have a decidedly alien content or bent. The alien superhero comes to save the world. The alien bad guy comes to destroy the world, etc. That's another thing. The whole alien good cop, bad cop scenario. Which is amply played out. And I'll, and I'll even, I'm going to even play a, a uh, excerpt from a, the old V in this particular study. But you see a lot of that as well. You've got good cop, bad cop. You've got the bad aliens and you've got the good aliens. The good aliens are particularly portrayed as like the Ascended Masters and the, the Nordics, the ones, the blonde hair, blue eye, ultra gorgeous, perfect looking in, uh, uh, aliens that are fighting the bad ones, which a lot of times are referred to as either reptilians, sometimes the greys are lumped in with them. It depends. There's so many different lies and flavors of deceptions out there. They're all evil. So don't, don't believe that any of them are good, because that's one of the things that, even these shows like V, that portray these um, aliens as evil, there's always a sect of them that tries to help humanity, and wants to help us out, and they're good aliens. That is a lie from the pit of hell. They're all evil, every one of them. 
They're demonic. So don't fall for that either, like a lot of people do. So that's the end of that particular article, and there's some references at the bottom if you wanted to, uh, some other articles they've written. Uh, Let's go ahead and go further here. This is a, a teaser promo from National Geographic entitled Alien Invasion. I, this was unbelievable. Um, this is the teaser program for Alien Invasion, which shows you how you should prepare for an alien attack. Now, this is National Geographic. What if an extra, extraterrestrial force attacked Earth? What might that look like, and how will the people of Earth respond? Consulting a cast of world-renowned scientists... Survival experts and defense experts, this two-hour special, Alien Invasion, explores this frightening scenario. Experts reveal what could motivate alien invaders to attack Earth and speculate on how the attack might play out. The strategy alien invaders might use and most effective ways for humans to respond. We'll turn to science and history to figure out what works. We'll show you how humanity can survive the ultimate test. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just play... um, a little over two minutes of this, and just let you hear it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roll this. It's called Fight or Flee, Alien Invasion Propaganda 2011 from National Geographic. We're just going to listen. Now, this is like a... It's three hours or something? Two or three hours? This thing? I mean, they really... I mean, this is top-notch as far as cinematography type of deal. And again, it, it just more evidence of all of the effort that is being put into preparing humanity for what's coming. And they're being very, more and more every day, open about these types of scenarios. So let's just go ahead and listen to this. Now, it, what it's showing is a gigantic mothership, the shadow of it, coming over a, a city, which, again, is such a common theme in these different various movies that I've mentioned in times past. And, and again, just preparation. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. When the unexpected explained happens. There have even been some sightings reported right here in the nation's capital. We have war gamed out every scenario imaginable. Take your weapon, take your rug, take three days' worth of food, and go. When the world's biggest question has been answered... Hey, take your weapon, take your ruck, um, your ruck, rucksack, and three days' worth of food, and go. Go where? I mean, the way that they're portraying this, these things are going to be over all the major population centers. Now, granted, if they're only over there, I can understand going to the country. But, I mean, it's this portrayal of being totally powerless... Um, they have superior technology, they have superior firepower, they're superior in every way, shape, and form, and you better flee, you better panic, type of thing. And I don't believe God's called us to do that. I do not believe that. Personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a King James Bible, which is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and I'm going to point it at those things if they're around, and I'm going to rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've dealt with enough evil, supernatural things to know that's always worked in the past. So, I just don't think this is something that that we should sit here and be afraid of and turn tail and run. What kind of example is that to, let's say, our unsaved neighbors? It's just not something that we need to fear. And if you do, you need to pray God Take away the fear and give you more faith. Above all, the Bible says, talk about in Ephesians 6, take up the shield of faith wherewith ye will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And when I say take in the King James Bible and rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, what what biblical examples do I have? Well, when Satan, when Jesus Christ dealt with Satan, after his 40-day fast, when he was tempted, he just quoted the word of God to Satan. He didn't try to argue or bicker. He quoted the word of God back to Satan. And then he said, the Lord rebuke you at the the end. After the last temptation. Um, 
when Jesus Christ comes back on a white horse at the battle of Armageddon to destroy his enemies, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, is what comes out of his mouth to devour his enemies. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, which is another part of the full armor of God. I mean, I'm just, I, I believe it's literal. I really do. I think that if we battle not against flesh and blood, as the Bible clearly indicates, we're battling against these spiritual wickedness in high places, that that's how we fight the battle. You're not going to come out there and take an AK-47 and start shooting at UFOs. I don't think that's, that, that's, that's a joke. That is not how you deal with this enemy. It is, it is a demonic spiritual enemy. It is masquerading as this alien force from this other universe or whatever, but it's a lie from the pit of hell. So I'm telling you right now, that's what I'm going to do. Help me alone. What will the answer be to our biggest threat? In the National Geographic Channel special, we reveal the secret plans for alien invasion coming soon. Okay, so that's the that was the promo for the actual alien invasion. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually let me see here. I, I thought I had had the, the the first part to the to that one. I was going to play you a little bit more, but you get the gist of it. That was the 45 second promo. There's all parts of it are up on the internet. I'm not saying advising. I watched like 15 minutes of the first one. You know, ultimately, I, yeah, there's some things you can glean out of it, but it's going to be propaganda. It's going to be portraying humans as helpless against these things. And what can you do to protect yourself type of, type of scenario. And um, it's all going to be man-centered, essentially. Now, at the same time, I give you a link to the teaching I did called Strong Delusion, ETs, Aliens, UFOs, Nephilim, and the Grenada Treaty, which is the one thing I had mentioned early, which I believe is a treaty that our government actually entered into with these entities. I believe it was back in the late 40s. And it's very in-depth. And, uh, you know, you can believe what you want, but it's around the same time the alien abduction started happening. And so I don't want to say anything more than that. If you want to know more about that, you can click on that link. It would be on probably on page 10 of the PDF that will be um, associated with the teaching for July 17, 2011 on UFOs and aliens. Next thing to talk about is this comment, the event, and comment Elenin. The event is a fictional NBC television show Again, more propaganda featuring a black U.S. president grappling with the national security problem of whether or not to tell the U.S. public about the existence of extraterrestrial life. Comet Elenin is approaching the inner solar system and has been associated with major earthquake activity on Earth. Now, I've done a couple different uh, teachings regarding this subject that I give you the links for here if you want to listen to those. Uh, let's see here. What is the relationship between Common Elenin and the event? Perhaps nothing, or maybe very a lot indeed. For there is an important paradox surrounding Common Elenin. The solution to the paradox may well have been revealed in the season finale of the event, where elements of the U.S. government using a fictional television show to break to the world, the world public, something with a tremendous global significance which might unfold. And again... I, I, ins, I inserted in here, remember, Luciferians typically always telegraph their punches prior to cataclysmic events. It's part of the way they practice their religion. That way they can say, well, they've been warned, and that they take greater pleasure when they see a population that has been warned and is yet powerless to prevent anything evil that is befalling them. The Luciferians take great delight in that, okay? So, going further, even though Common Elenin was only discovered in December of 2010 by Russian amateur astronomer uh, 
Leonid Elenin, its passage through the solar system could be tracked back to when it entered the solar system by a very useful orbiting trap tracking software that NASA's JPL makes freely available to the public. Something remarkable was found by a Bosnian Earth scientist who tracked Elenin's orbital passage back to 2006. Dr. Mansour Omer Bashish found that Elenin was aligned with the Earth and other planets when major earthquakes had appeared. In a paper released in an online science archive, he outlined the most significant alignments featuring Elenin that he claimed are linked to seismic activity on Earth. The remarkable discovery by Dr. Omer Bashish suggests that Elenin was something very large with an enormous mass and gravitational field to be able to influence seismic events on Earth from a very long distance going back as far as 2006. Elenin's size and mass could be as big as a brown dwarf star as some conspiracy theorists have been arguing and has been secretly known to be approaching in the inner solar system. In the 1983, the Washington Post and New York Times published articles about a large, mysterious planet X, and again, I've documented all this, and I give you the links here where I've documented it, but they, they published um, articles about a large, mysterious planet X that could be a brown dwarf star. Now, what a brown dwarf star means is it's a star that doesn't have quite enough mass. It's big. It's even a little bit bigger than Jupiter. But it doesn't have quite enough mass to be a star like our sun. Okay, It can't fully ignite. So it's called a brown dwarf star. Because a sun has to have a certain amount of mass in order to actually ignite. Okay, Just so you know, that's what that means. So... The Brown's Dwarf Star, um, okay, hold on here. According to some researchers, Planet X was none other than Planet Nibiru, revealed by the first published book by the recently deceased scholar of Sumerian history, Zechariah Stitchens, who, who I don't recommend. <laughs> I don't recommend. The guy was, is, well, he, he wasn't a Christian, put it that way. Anyway, I give you my uh, Teachings I've done on this subject, 2012, the Mayan calendar, pole shift, wormwood, planet X, Nibiru, crystal skulls. That was from September 7, 2008. And then also the more recent one I did on April 5, 2011, entitled Wormwood, Planet X, Nibiru, Common Elenin, NASA, the pole shift, and nuclear reactors and earthquakes. Lighthearted, whimsical subjects, I know. So, moving right along, in 1976, Stitchin wrote, the 12th planet, uh, he included the moon and the sun as planets, which according to ancient Sumerian cuneiform text was Nibiru, was the homeworld of extraterrestrials called the Anunnaki. Nibiru, or planet X, was a long period body that took 3,600 years to revolve around our solar system. According to Sitchin, uh, each time Nibiru, or planet X, passed through our inner solar system, major destruction would occur to nearby planets. For some researchers, Elenin's seismic influence on the Earth is a sign that it is actually Nibiru. Now, the Bible talks about wormwood, okay, which could have some uh, parallels here. Okay, Again, hard to be totally dogmatic, but at least if you've been presented with the scenario, if things do go down regarding this particular subject... It won't be the first time you've ever heard it. Okay? So, some go so far as to claim that the name Elenin is in fact a code name, in meaning the, the letters stand for Extinction Level Event Nibiru is Near. Well, that's kind of a stretch. But, that's what some people say. The main problem with the Elenin uh brown star, brown door star claim is that its orbit as mapped and projected by JPL's orbital tracker showed that Elenin was an object with a tiny mass. Elenin would loop around the sun in less than three months, spanning September to November of 2011. This was an impossible orbital swing around the sun if Elenin was really a brown dwarf star. In the words of Donald Yeomans from JPL, the data revealed that Elenin was kind of wimpy. And there is nothing... Uh, the quote kind of wimpy, and there is nothing to be concerned about. So there is a paradox here over what G JPL is telling us about Elenin and its seismic influences from long distances. 
The season finale of NBC's The Event finally revealed that the event, what this supposed event was all about. For those that watched all 22 episodes, the event wasn't about the disclosure of extraterrestrial life. Of course, that's not really true, but... um, or the announcement that extraterrestrials are living among us, it wasn't the appearance of extraterrestrial motherships over populated areas, which is a favorite jaw-dropping scene from popular movies such as Independence Day, Battle Los Angeles, or television shows like V. No, the event was something even more breathtaking. The event was preceded by a series of worldwide earthquakes, and then it was suddenly revealed, which we're having earthquakes off the scale, off the charts, all over the world. They're not being... Of course, I don't have cable or anything like that, but from what I can see, they're being mo- they're being downplayed massively, which is what the mass media does. They would rather tell you about, you know, Anthony Weiner or, or some prince marrying some princess or some other torrid tale in Hollywood, some worthless, totally worthless piece of news, you know. Anyway... Um, the event was preceded by a series of worldwide earthquakes, and then it was suddenly revealed. An exoplanet appeared out of some kind of cosmic anomaly in a near-Earth orbit, dwarfing the moon in size. More significantly, the exoplanet was the home world of extraterrestrials. This is uh, that 2010 Space Odyssey. Pretty sure at the end of that, that was the big deal with that too. Another planet appearing in our solar system. Now, you know, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying, though, there has been a lot of Hollywood postulating toward that. So, again, not being dogmatic here. I'm just saying these are some things that I think we should at least be aware of. Okay, so let's go further here. So, this planet was an actual homeworld of extraterrestrials. As it appeared, earthquakes continued to intensify on Earth. Now, Luke 21, 25, and 26 says, Jesus talking, and there, and regarding the end times, and there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So that verse, which is regarding the end times, says there's going to be signs in the sun and the moons and the stars. Now, how is that going to play out? We don't really know. It's kind of a a general statement. But there is some latitude there. We, We don't really know. But again, there's a lot of posturing by Hollywood regarding this particular subject. So, uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see here. Was the event foreshadowing something significant about to unfold in our planetary history? Is common element merely the vanguard of something much larger following it that is responsible for the seismic activity discovered by Dr. Omer Bashish? Will a large exoplanet, the homeworld of ancient extraterrestrial visitors, suddenly appear during its passage through the inner solar system close to Earth in the not too, in the not too distant future, these questions all arise from the paradox that is common Elenin, and we may not have to wait too long as Elenin will on October sixteenth be only 0.24 AU from the Earth, which is only a quarter of the distance to the Sun. So again, I wanted to throw that in, because it kind of does go along with this particular subject. Uh, The next article, I think we're going to go ahead and um, end part two here. And uh, we'll go to part three next. Planks and ropes. But I will will interject something in here. I don't think all crop circles are man-made. I mean, it's just a satanic parlor trick. You know, if they they got this advanced technology, you know, they're, they're, you know, fallen angels, (laughs) you know, they've got advanced technology, they've been around moons of more years than, you know, I shouldn't say millions, but I mean, they've been around a lot longer than we've been around, okay, so, for them to do something like a crop circle, 
is just, again, really a satanic parlor trick. I do think, and it's self-admitted, that a lot of these are man-made, though. And this, there's a whole group that exists, these circle makers, that go around and do this stuff. Okay, so going further here, but this does not mean that even indisputably man-made circles aren't relevant to the UFO phenomenon. People involved in the construction of crop circles often report strange phenomena surrounding these sites, even when they're making them manually. Quote, our crop formations are intended to function as temporary sacred sites in this landscape. In other words, a place where you could go to do an occult working, maybe some type of witchcraft ritual, maybe a channeling session, something of this nature. That's why they're actually made. While constructing uh, crop formations in the fields, we have experienced a series of of aerial anomalies, including small balls of light, which would most likely be orbs, columns of light, and blinding flashes, all apparently targeting us in our crop formations. We are unsurprised at the numerous visitors who have reported a diverse assortment of anomalies associated with our artworks. These have included physiological effects such as headache and nausea, uh, healing effects, uh, such as one reported for a cure for acute osteoporosis. Wow. Number one, how do you get acute osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is a is bone loss, essentially. Okay, um, Usually of, of around 60% of the actual uh, bone integrity of a person, particularly happens with women more often than, than men, due to various hormonal factors, and a lot of other factors that can interplay with that. But, um, how do you get acute osteoporosis? It, like, takes years, it takes decades. That thing, and when you, when you, um, it appears as though when they make these crop circles, a lot of paranormal things start to happen. It's a lot like messing around with the Ouija board. You're going to attract evil. You're going to attract these demonic energies into the area. Essentially. So, going further, uh, let's see here. Okay, demonologists expect that when people dabble with the occult, even as a joke or a prank, evil spirits will usually jump at the opportunity to deceive and gain control over the people, like those that have become possessed after messing around with Ouija boards. Okay, just reiterating what I just said. But, circle makers, meaning these guys, this group called circle makers, may not be entirely innocent in this regard. As our book, Alien Intrusion, UFOs and Evolution Connection, documents, quote, a little-known fact about circle makers is that before they entered the lucrative commercial market, they called themselves Team Satan. That's pretty direct. (laughs) There's nothing, you know, there's really nothing left in the imagination there. Team Satan. Uh, That's... In decades to develop osteoporosis. It's a long, slow thing. And that's why it's so hard to reverse. Because, number one, you're dealing with bone, which has a very poor blood supply. And um, you're dealing with something that took decades to happen, so it's very hard to reverse it quickly. They're saying they had actually gotten healed from osteoporosis. Well, the only way you could really verify that is through a bone density test. So, anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. Anyway, physical effects such as camera and other electronic equipment failure... Uh, happen in the crop circles. We are certain that our artworks are subject of paranormal forces and act to catalyze other paranormal events. It almost sounds like, you know, when these these people play with Ouija boards. And that video series I had told you about the other day that I had watched um, that I said you need to... The one of the ones I said, you know, you really need to pray about before you even think about watching. Um, one of those videos showed people using the Ouija board. They were home videos. And I mean, you know, that that oracle thing that that you put your hands on, I mean, that thing was moving by itself big time. And it was in different scenarios over and over and over again. Again, it's a demonic parlor trick. It's just a demon moving. We'd like to welcome you back to our current event and weekly Bible study for July 17th, 2011. This is part two of our teaching regarding the UFO alien agenda kicking into high gear, um, that whole end-time deception. 
And we're, we're just going to go ahead and continue with our study. I'm going to read from our PDF here. Some people get so involved in the ET phenomenon that they can actually start channeling supposed space brothers. Sometimes they claim that the aliens actually communicate through them. But how can a physical being be channeled? Some alien beings claim to have evolved beyond matter to a spiritual existence. It seeks to provide an atheistic evolutionary mechanism to justify that aliens are, in fact, really spiritual beings who can replace the ultimate spiritual being of man's construction, God. So, in other words, they're trying to usurp God's position. True believers point to crop circles as a major physical evidence of alien visitations. They claim that the the designs are too complex to be man-made, Groups like circle makers amply disprove that crop crop circles, the claim that crop circles have to be created by beings with advanced technology. In fact, traditional crop circles are easily made